Hello, I'm Susan Saravo, Social Media Manager at Comerica Bank. Welcome to our video featuring Girls Who Code founder Reshma Sajani. Reshma, welcome and thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me, Susan. Great to have you here. Reshma, you are also a best-selling author. Your most recent book, Brave Not Perfect, has helped women and girls go for their dreams. Now tell us how has the response been since you published it and is the message even more relevant during a pandemic? It's been incredible. Incredible. Um, I think I did over 150 speeches across the world. And what was so interesting is it didn't matter who I was speaking to, whether they were black or white, poor or rich in Brazil or in Oakland. We all had this very shared experience of the havoc that perfectionism has wracked on our lives and the possibility for bravery to unlock our biggest joy and our greatest potential. Reshma, you're going to be the keynote speaker at our Women's Business Symposium in May. Uh, tell us what you're going to be talking about. Well, I'm going to be talking about all things bravery and perfection. I'm going to be talking about failure. You know, this has been a really challenging year for so many women. Uh, you would have thought the perfectionism would have died in the pandemic, but I think many of us even felt even more pressure. Uh, you know, when COVID-19 started, it was the pressure to you know bake banana bread and learn how to play the guitar. You know, as you began to learn how to work with your children at your feet, it was the pressure to not kind of show your business and to turn off the Zoom screen and the mute button and, you know, to learn what a new normal meant. And so I think more than anything before, any more than ever before we've needed bravery in our lives. And I want to talk about that. Yeah, well, good points. We're looking forward to that. Now, Rashma, you have a big following on social media platforms. Could you tell us more about how social media has played a role in building your personal brand and getting your message out to the masses? <laughs> I feel like I have a hate love relationship with social media. Uh, let's be honest, right? Um, you know, I 45 years old, like I remember not having a cell phone and not living your life you know, on social media. So many of the young women that I taught and the pressure that they feel, the anxiety that they feel is because of social media. And so I always wanted to use it authentically as a leader and to maybe, you know, mix up some of the norms. I was always an early Twitter adopter and I love Twitter. It's probably one of my favorite platforms. Um, I think so is LinkedIn because you can actually have a substantive conversation and share information. Um, Instagram is fun. Uh, so, uh, you know, I enjoy that platform. But one of the tactics that I've uh, been doing for a couple of years now is this idea of failure Friday. You know, when I was young um, and I would be sitting on, you know, uh, the stage watching amazing women, I would think to myself, gosh, I could never do that. I could never be like that. I don't have X. I don't have Y. And, you know, one of the things I found is that many times when women became leaders, they didn't tell the truth. They didn't tell the pain and the struggles and the challenges. And so their success seemed so unobtainable. And, you know, I think we lie a lot on social media. You know, I think we make it seem like our lives are perfect, that our marriages aren't broken, and that our kids are these wonderful humans that we want to be around all the time. Lie, lie, lie. And so I wanted to, you know, tell the truth. And so I started doing Failure Fridays a couple of years ago to like share my failures, um, share the mess behind the scenes, you know, and encourage other people to do the same. Because I feel like failure is the biggest gift. Uh, every Everything about who I am today is because of the rejections and the failures and like the missteps. And do you feel that sharing those kinds of experiences, those of failures, does it kind of give other women permission to, to share theirs and not really feel bad about it? Absolutely. I mean, I'm a little, I realize, I mean, I'm definitely indexed on the braver side and on like part of, I guess, I hate that word, but part of who I am or my brand is that um, I tell the truth, you know, uh, and it doesn't matter how powerful you are or how fearful or how the consequences of that truth, I tell my truth. And, um, and that has been a constant journey and a muscle that I've been building. And I hope that by me telling the truth, um, I encourage other to do the same. I just had a profile story in the New York Times. Um, and, you know, it's this photo and it like, I'm wearing all black and it's just like these white hand marks of like my 14 month old son because I was feeding, you know, him lunch when the photographer came on, right? Like sure enough, you know, you get a profile on the New York Times and, you know, it's like, it's not perfect, right? 
but it's honest, you know, and I think it's the way that many of us are kind of living our lives today. Well, and you mentioned you've been working on this for several years now. For women who are just kind of getting started, they have opinions to share, but they really feel intimidated to put themselves out there. What advice would you give them? You know, I would just, I would share your truth. And, you know, I, I, one of the things about Twitter that I've noticed over the past couple of years is, you know, you are um, rewarded for saying nasty things. And so I intentionally say really positive things on Twitter. And I don't pay attention uh, to how many likes I get or, you know, how many people viewed my post. And so I think you have to like, and I took a, um, you know, over the winter holidays, I took a two, a two week social media, you know, um, break. And it was amazing because I was able to like cure my addiction because I think especially now, you know, we spend a lot of time like just doom scrolling. And um, because we're home all the time or we're waiting, you know, waiting for the world to get back to what it was. And so I think it's about breaking those habits and using social media in a way that works for you. I mean, as an activist, especially right now in the work I'm doing, you know, on Marshall Plan for Moms, it's just been really, really a powerful, useful tool in making moms say, you know, you're not alone. Like, I see you and we have a shared common experience and we're in this fight together. Any opportunities that have come your way from becoming more visible on social media? I mean, I would say the, the opportunities are to like make the change that I want to see in the world, you know, to teach hundreds of thousands of girls to code, you know, to amplify that, you know, you girls are leaders and they'll heal us and they'll save us. And I think today it's, again, amplifying that for mothers. But again, I, I want to be clear, like, I, I think that social media is not all great. Um, and I think you have to use it in a way that works for you because it also can be very toxic. You know, I, I would say that, you know, before COVID-19, we were in this, you know, we were in this kind of um, behavior where we were actually not telling, you know, we were over indexing the amazingness of our lives, even if it wasn't true. Like I remember being with my niece and we'd go to the beach and she wouldn't be sitting there with me on the sand enjoying the ocean and just taking in the environment and just how beautiful it was. She was there to get her photo and then she would bounce, you know? So it's like you weren't in the moment because the moment was only about the photo. And then I think the reverse happened to us in COVID-19 where we didn't share the beauties uh, or the happy moments that were happening in our lives because we didn't, we felt guilty about it or we were shamed for it. So there are times where I feel like in social media, like you get caught up in like how you're supposed to behave and how you're supposed to be uh, present yourself. That isn't honest. And that's very toxic. So finding the right balance, that's really important. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Well, is there anything else that you'd like to mention, Reshma, while we have you here? No, this is great. Okay, well, we are really looking forward to hearing from you at our Women's Business Symposium virtual event. It's going to be awesome, and you're going to do an awesome job. So we are really, we just can't wait. So we'll see you there oh, soon. I can't wait. Nice. I can't wait to see you soon. Okay. Thank you, Rashma.